Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. The performance of machine learning models depends both on learning algorithms as well as the data used for training and validation. You hear a lot about recent advances in designing sophisticated machine learning algorithms such as deep neural nets and so on. However, much less attention has been paid to the role of data collection and annotation for developing machine learning models. Specifically, heuristic data collection techniques undermine the ability to reliably test the performance of machine learning models, which makes them prone to develop weak spots or classes of examples that are difficult or impossible to accurately predict irrespective of model complexity. This video will explain an important topic in this area, which is called high confidence errors or unknown unknowns. Before we get started, if you're not subscribed, please consider joining the Dr. Data Science team so you don't miss future videos. In general, there are two types of weak spots of machine learning models. The first one is called known unknowns, which refers to examples or data samples for which a model is unsure about its prediction. Let's take a look at this simple example where we use the logistic regression algorithm for classifying iris flower data set containing three species. So this is a classification problem with three classes. And this popular benchmark has been used a lot for understanding traditional classifiers and is already part of the scikit-learn uh, data sets. After training the classifier, we use the method predict proba, that's what you see here, the clf.predict proba, to give us the probabilities that each sample to belongs to one of the three classes. So that's why we see here that we uh, printed one of these uh, array of probabilities which shows the probability that that data sample belongs to uh, each of those three classes. And if you look at here, you note that the classifier is really uncertain about its prediction because the maximum probability that we have here is close to uh, 55%. Ideally, we like to see that the maximum probability to be close to one, so meaning that the classifier is almost 100% confident that that data sample belongs to one class. And then the remaining probability estimates to be close to zero, because recall that the sum of all probabilities uh, should, um, should be one. So when we add all these numbers, they should be one. That's the basic, prob uh, the basic proper property of probability. And here we can see that the maximum probability is 55%. So this means that the classifier is uncertain. However, the good news here is that we know that our classifier is making mistakes and we shouldn't rely on its predictions at this stage. So that's like the good part, that at least we know that this classifier is not reliable. And although this can be a challenging problem to solve, you can use a different classifier or request for more training examples to update your training data and hopefully improve the performance of machine learning model. And these strategies in general are uh, they are called active learning and I will explain them in another video. Now let's uh, talk about the second group which is the main topic of this video uh, which is called uh, unknown unknowns. Unknown unknowns refer to data samples for which a model is confident about its answer, meaning that we get probabilities very close to one or 100%, but is actually wrong. And this is a real problem in developing machine learning models. So here we are gonna take a look at a simple Python example to see what unknown unknowns uh, they refer to. So here we're going to import NumPy as NP 
and I'm gonna generate a synthetic or simulated data set because in this case I can easily explain the main idea uh, behind unknown unknowns and we import uh, matplotlib.pyplot as plt for visualization so what we are going to do here is that we are going to create 1500 samples and also in order to make this problem more challenging I'm going to make this data set imbalanced. So I take the original data set that is generated by make blobs and from class 0 I'm going to keep 500 of them. From class 1 I keep only 100 of them and from this third class, class label 2, I'm going to take only 10 of them. So that's what is called as x. So x has 610 samples 500 from class 0 100 from class 1 and 10 from class 2 and finally i generate this uh vector of labels which is y uh that you can see that it shows those labels 0 1 and 2 and one thing also i like to mention here is that this x is a two-dimensional array the number of rows is equal to 610 and the number of columns is two because here we have two features that's like one of the properties of make blobs that if you don't specify the number of uh, features which would be the same as the number of columns it is uh, automatically set to be two and now i'm going to uh, use the scatter plot to visualize this data set and if you look at here, I'm setting the argument C equals to Y. So this means that I'm going to look at also those ground truth uh, labels. So that's what we can see here. So let's say one class refers to dogs and the other one cats. And the, uh, the smallest class here, let's say, refers to birds, right? So you are trying to, for example, uh, classify uh, pets that people have. And obviously a lot of people have dogs and a lot of people have cats but there might be only a few people that they keep birds at home but that's what this data set is right so these are the ground truth labels meaning that you have all these um you know data samples uh annotated in reality what we have is that we have a set of input samples and we only can label a small subset of them so that's why we call this partially labeled data so if you look at this um, we should have like 10 labeled points here that i showed them with these pluses here and let's say you know you just randomly pick 10 of these samples ask somebody to label them for you uh, to train a classifier so that you know from now on you can recognize uh, different types of pets and so what happens here is that if we train use again logistic regression classifier and train um, a classifier on this data because we only considered two out of the three classes in the training data set so now we def we basically find a binary classifier with this uh, sort of like decision boundary that you can see here is color coded so if we are on one side this means that this is one class and then the other side means that we belong to, to the other class so we see that um, you know we have now this classifier and for those 10 samples if you remember class 2 only had 10 samples if I look at the probabilities right again using that uh, predict proba that we, you saw that probably there stands for probability you see that the classifier is very confident almost like 99.99 or 99 percent uh, in in all these cases that uh, the the samples from that sort of like you know birds class the, the class that belongs to birds they all also belong to cats class and that's just because we have a poor quality training data set and now here you can also use you know deep learning or any other favorite classifier that you have and you will see that we are not really uh, making any progress right because simply we don't have a good quality data to be able to recognize these different classes right and so here uh, that's what uh, we can see that uh, you know we have like very 
a high confidence uh, per, uh, predictions, but you know they're actually wrong. And the problem is also exacerbated because now we can see that if we again choose a subset of data for annotation to validate classifier we, again we may miss this uh class so the the birds class the the smallest class here on the top um, right and we again find that the classifier is doing great while we totally missed important information about this data set and therefore, this is something that uh, we call high confidence errors or unknown unknowns, meaning that our classifier is very confident in some regions in the input space, while those predictions are obviously wrong. And this is problematic because you may believe that uh, this is something that, um, you know, your classifier is doing great while, you know, making very uh, uh, sort of like, you know, uh, high consequence mistakes. And as a bonus here, I'll show you also how to plot that decision boundary. So one thing that you can do, again, remember that we said that uh, here on the X, Y axis, one is the first column of X and the other one is the second column. So we can find the min and maximal, and then we can use the np.arrange um, to, uh, by setting this H as a step size, and now we can create these equally spaced points. And then we use numpy.meshgrid to create a two-dimensional grid. And now we create a set of test data points by concatenating this x, x, and y, y. And now we make predictions. And this allows us, as we saw in this sort of like figure, to generate this type of decision boundary. I hope you found this video useful and now you know that uh, sometimes you may have really uh, low uh, training error and generalization error but you may not uh, have a very reliable classifier and you know one of the reasons um, so therefore I hope that you can apply this um, topic in your research thanks for watching